This brief video will introduce you to some of the aspects of the FDA's regulation of tobacco products. The FDA, of course, is the United States Food and Drug Administration. We will focus on one set of FDA regulations called the Quality System Regulations, or QSRs. But first, let's look at the FDA's regulation of tobacco products as medical devices. As many of you know, in August 1996, the FDA declared that tobacco products were devices, as that term is defined in the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. In addition, the FDA declared that tobacco products were not just devices, but were restrictive devices, a particular form of restriction that the FDA can impose on medical devices. When a product is a restricted device, the FDA is allowed to regulate aspects of the product's distribution, sale, and use. That is what the FDA has done in its tobacco regulations. It has promulgated rules that control the distribution, sale, and use of cigarettes. The FDA's tobacco regulation makes certain requirements on the labeling and promotion of tobacco products, including cigarettes. As you may know, the regulation includes not only labeling, but also advertising limitations and restrictions. These are the primary areas that were covered in the FDA tobacco rules that were announced in August 1996. And so, other parts of FDA's regulation of devices also could apply to tobacco products, including cigarettes. One of the things I want to do now is to, to identify those other requirements that apply to all devices that are regulated by FDA whether they're tobacco products or other kinds of devices. The first of those requirements is that medical devices or devices cannot be adulterated under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. Adulteration uh, doesn't mean anything uh, very mysterious. And things that uh, you think of as uh, product contaminations uh, are included within adulteration, uh, filth, mold, uh, insects, uh, other kinds of sanitation and housekeeping kinds of requirements are part of FDA's scheme to prevent uh, adulteration in devices. And the Food and Drug Act has other definitions for adulteration. But mostly, they have to do with product contamination and uh, filth, uh, things of that kind. In addition, any medical device cannot be misbranded. That is, its labeling has to be truthful and honest. And so there are parts of the food and drug laws that prevent any medical device from having labeling that is false or misleading, from labeling that does not uh, describe the intended use of the product, labeling that does not give warnings about the use of the product, and other standard requirements for product disclosure. FDA enforces these under the misbranding provisions of the Food and Drug Act. Now we will focus on one particular requirement applicable to medical devices, and that is FDA's Quality System Regulations, or QSR. The regulations reach just about every activity that a company does, from procedures to training to incoming materials, to manufacturing the finished product, to storage and distribution, and just about every step in between. It is a very comprehensive regulation and was designed by the FDA to be comprehensive and to cover all aspects of device manufacture. However, there are no special device regulations for tobacco products or specific to tobacco products. There is only one general QSR establishing good manufacturing practices. This regulation applies to all devices that the FDA regulates. The scope of the quality system regulation is very broad, as we have noted. It covers basically three kinds of things, processes, facilities, and controls. The regulation applies to every phase of the device development. The QSR applies to the design of the product, the manufacturer of the product itself, all the packaging and labeling for the product, the storage of the product, and its distribution. For all those activities, the regulations require documentation. The FDA's quality system regulations apply to the following things that are done during the manufacture of a product. One, 
a company's quality policy. Two, personnel and training. Three, production and document controls. Four, purchasing, receiving, and acceptance procedures. Five, design controls and validation. And six, distribution. The FDA, through its regulations, puts a heavy emphasis on problem areas during the manufacture of a device. And as a result, the QSR includes provisions concerning complaints, non-conformances, corrective activities, and preventive initiatives to make sure a product is not adulterated or misbranded. Finally, the QSR applies not only to what people do and the building in which they work, but also to all of the equipment. In addition, computerized systems that are used to run manufacturing and other equipment are subject to FDA's regulations. If a device does not comply with FDA's QSR regulations in a significant way, then the FDA uh, will take, normally take one of three different kinds of enforcement and regulatory actions. The first is a warning letter. This is a letter that the, comp that the agency, FDA, issues to a company to notify the company that in FDA's view, the company's procedures and processes are not in compliance with the QSR. If the FDA is dissatisfied with a company's response to a warning letter, or if the agency thinks that there is a significant public health uh, problem created by the marketing of a device, the FDA may ask a company to recall the product or remove it from the market. There are a variety of different kinds of recalls or removals, different procedures and requirements apply to each one. The FDA can also issue adverse publicity about situations that it thinks creates public health risks. The FDA views its quality system regulations as designed to encourage companies to establish what the agency calls a closed loop system. A closed loop system of manufacturing is one that is designed to create a particular product consistent with particular specifications and to do that regularly in a reliable and predictable way. All of the FDA's QSRs are designed so that a high quality product will predictably and reliably roll off the assembly line at the end of the manufacturing process. FDA has a way of looking at its QSR to make sure that this kind of reliable and predictable system exists. And that's why it is called the closed loop system. The parts of a closed loop system are these. The FDA expects a very comprehensive design and design control process so that the company knows what it wants to make and what it is making. Once the design exists, the FDA wants a company to establish three things. One, a definition of what its quality and manufacturing objectives are. Two, a documentation system to prove that it's doing what it thinks it's doing and what it says it's doing. And three, implementation of its quality system, including verification and validation of processes. This is what the FDA means by establishing a quality system. A company defines the system, a company documents the system, then the company implements the system. These three things are what the FDA calls establishing a system. If a company wants to make a change in its procedure, it has to control that change process so that it knows what is different, why it is different, and that the company has implemented, in an organized way, whatever that difference or change is. That gets us back to the original closed loop. If you change something in the loop, you get back into the loop through a change process. Once the loop is created and a company system exists, then the FDA has only three more requirements. One, training. So employees know what the requirements of the system are for the system that has been established. Two, auditing. To assure the system is working the way it is supposed to work. And three, documented change if the system is not. In summary, this is the closed loop that the FDA intends to create. One, designing the product. Two, establishing the system. Three, training employees against the system, four, auditing against the system, and five, controlling any change. This is the general scheme for the FDA's quality system. Again, as we have mentioned, the regulations are very broad and establish broad requirements.
companies are allowed to interpret and define those requirements in ways that are suitable to their own product, but not to fall below a threshold of compliance the FDA envisions for all manufacturers of medical devices, regardless of what kind of devices they are. As I'm sure is clear to you by now, the FDA's quality system regulation is a comprehensive regulation. It touches the functions, and performance, and jobs of just about everyone in a company that makes a product that FDA calls a device. And just as it is a comprehensive program, it also requires that people act in an interdependent way. Everyone has to pull their part of the load. Everyone has to make sure that their part of the system is compliant in order for the system to be compliant as a whole. And so part of this training is not only to expose you to the requirements of a quality system, but to underscore for you, as always, that the work of everyone in the company uh, will be measured against these new requirements, and that the requirements themselves call on people to uh, function and act together and to support each other's activities so that uh, the manufacturing can be a, a seamless and compliant uh, exercise uh, for FDA QSR.